Those are protesters who tried to rush into a Republican-led House hearing on crime in New York City. The House Judiciary Committee organized the hearing. Here's Chair Jim Jordan from Ohio talking about progressive Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg. In Bragg's Manhattan, you can resist arrest, deal drugs, obstruct arrest, and even carry a gun to get away with it. And guess what happened under this new policy? More crime. Republicans will tell you crime in New York City is out of control and that it's all Bragg's fault. And to be fair, crime did rise a lot last year. Auto thefts up 109 percent, burglaries up 72 percent, robberies up 52 percent, along with a 33 percent increase in murders. But a quarter of the way through this year, so far, most major crimes are down, including murders, shootings and rapes. Congressman Kevin Kiley, Republican from California, was at the hearing, member of the Judiciary Committee and with us now. I guess at the, at the outset, uh, of all of the things that are, are happening with the Judiciary Committee and Judiciary uh, in America, how is street crime in Manhattan the most important thing? Uh, well, when it comes to someone's safety and security, their ability to feel safe in their home, when they're parking their car, when they're getting on the, uh, the metro, uh, you know, when they're walking about, out and about in their community, uh, when it comes to their kids getting to and from school, uh, I would submit that there is nothing more important than that. And the fact is that in cities like uh, New York, uh, like Los Angeles, like San Francisco, that have engaged in this reckless experiment of defunding the police and putting progressive prosecutors in district attorney's offices, uh, the result have been uh, extremely concerning. And so, uh, you know, as uh, the yeah. Committee of Jurisdiction for Issues Related to Crime and Law Enforcement, we felt important to shine a light on that. Right, but Republicans are all about states' rights and local control, and I'm, I'm just trying to understand the people in those cities knew what they were voting for. Nobody's said that Alvin Bragg or Kim Fox or Kim Gardner or any of these progressive DAs that have created this crime problem, whose policies have created this crime problem, uh, hoodwinked anybody. They told people exactly what they're going to do. I'm wondering, I'm just sort of trying to, to square the circle of Republicans who say, hey, the, everything should be pushed away from the federal government, but when it's politically convenient, then all of a sudden we want to go have hearings in New York City about what New York City voters did in New York. Well, actually, when it comes to the way voters have reacted, uh, you know, the, the message voters have sent is very clear. Look at what happened in San Francisco. They uh, elected a similar so-called progressive prosecutor. Uh, and after uh, that person went in and refused to prosecute crimes and crime went way up, what did the voters of San Francisco do? This is, by the way, uh, a city that is not a red city. The Trump-Pence uh, ticket got 12 percent of the vote there. And yet those same voters overwhelmingly recalled from office this so-called progressive prosecutor. Uh, in Los Angeles County, where George Gascon uh, is the, uh, the so-called progressive prosecutor there, 36 different cities have issued votes of no confidence against George Gascon. And so the reaction of people when it comes to uh, how they're behaving in the voting booth is mirrored by the way that they're uh, responding in terms of their own living circumstances. People are leaving New York City, you know, are leaving I, Los I, Angeles, I, I, are leaving in San Francisco in record numbers. You know, I, 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 get the, I get the argument. I also understand that, you know, in, in Philadelphia, a uh, progressive prosecutor was reelected. In St. Louis, my hometown, progressive prosecutor reelected. Uh, in Chicago, Kim Fox um, reelected as well. Uh, just, just to give the, the Democrats their due, here's Jerry Nadler uh, at the hearings today. Take a listen. But don't be fooled. This is not a serious exercise. This is a political stunt. They are using their public offices and the resources of our committee to protect their political patron, Donald Trump. Did you guys have this planned and scheduled before Donald Trump got indicted? Well, I'm not the one responsible for setting the hearing. I'm a member of the committee, and I was uh, happy to go and participate because it's such an important issue. But I'll tell you this, uh, is that those comments from the ranking member uh, really backfired. Uh, they provoked an extremely, uh, you know, passionate response from the victims who were there to testify. A woman who lost her yeah. child uh, in, in Alvin Bragg's Manhattan. Uh, a Jewish man who was the victim of an anti-Semitic uh, hate crime with very little consequence uh, for the offender. And they were extremely offended 
by the notion uh, that somehow, uh, you know, that they were, this was just sort of some sort of pretext. The reality is we have been focusing like a laser on the consequences of a reckless defund the police policies and the reckless uh, refusal to prosecute on the part of these so-called progressive prosecutors. And today's hearing was, uh, was another example of that. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.